Nice one, mate. Well, we're we're just going to get sort of relatively straight into it. Um, you know, we're on Twitch, but to be honest, as you know, the channel's not massive, so it's not like it's not like we're going to get tons of people on Twitch. Uh, and then I'll just do the the editing stuff before it goes on YouTube tomorrow, mate. But yeah, but um, good win for you boys yesterday in the league. Talking about club football yeah. first. Good start yeah, to the yeah. season so far. Yeah, it was well. In a sense, it has been. We had a we had a bumpy ride with obviously not having the full depth of squad due to obviously COVID and stuff, which pushed pushed back the festival. So everyone had their planned things that they were doing. So didn't have our strongest squad out for the games we did. But when we end up getting our games back, well, our players back, and we're just striding forward now, and we're just going to keep going. So yeah, we're doing what, okay. We're back on track. What is just just before we get on to everything, um, BVI? What is the the goal of Andover for town and then I think maybe well, let's talk about like you and club football stuff maybe a little bit later yeah. on but kind of from like a club side and, and Andover are they pushing to because it's quite a competitive league that one isn't it yeah that's, that's the thing so with with the Wessex it's, it is a competitive league because there is a bit of money in there and yeah. you've got the teams that are now on a bit of money that are trying to push to go out of Wessex and into yeah. Southern um for me, being a standpoint, playing against teams in both league and training for Southern teams and uh, the Premier Division, Division One in the Wessex isn't any different. The teams are just pretty much the same, just trying to get out. It's when yeah. you push for the Southern and go onwards, then it gets to more of the okay, this is where the standard starts getting a bit better. But the teams in those leagues are all the same, really, because like I said, we, we've beaten two teams now in the league above. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Baffins and then Bashley, and then we've got another team, uh, Choose and Knight, who are in the league above, which we are going to go against and try and beat. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I saw that. So we are, so we we bumped into you, didn't we? Kind of yeah. strangely, um, haven't we? So we live kind of around Haven't. So yeah. um, I saw that you beat Baffins. I actually saw you've got quite a, a few good games. That's good to speak to you about this. Actually, Tom, you have got um, New Street in the VAR. Is it the Ooh. VARs um, next Saturday? So that's a, that's a big game. Big so you guys game. got some some yeah some, some cool games coming up um yeah that'll be interesting it'll be interesting we'll we'll be keeping tabs for sure i mean like i, I guess before we get into this we I, I sort of want to say we wanted to say we appreciate you putting some, some time yeah. as tom said this isn't sky sports right we <laughs> we set yeah right we, we set this up we've got this as as you probably you know you randomly bumped into two strange blokes after you you finished training we were like sorry are you, are you josh bertie <laughs> um, and then it's kind of rolled from there a little bit, isn't it? But yeah, mate, we yeah. appreciate you putting some time aside just to I'm just sure. to sort of chew the fat with us. Um, yeah. We, as you already know, we have this sort of weird love and affiliation with all these these kind of Milo nations. So wanted to sort of set this up and, and speak to players like yourself because it, I don't really know kind of what the best how the best way to frame it is. But you've gone from and or you go from you know and you'll admit this yourself, right? Playing for Andover Town, you you had Infinity away yesterday. Yeah, a few months ago, you were in Curacao in in FIFA World Cup qualification. Like, come on, yeah. right? Yeah. What, what, what is that? What is that? Um, I, I kind of almost wanted to start at the beginning of it, if, if to sort of put this into some sort of chronological order, right? So, you made your debut for, for the BVI over three years ago now. Yeah. Talk us through like the feeling of like that first call up and. I guess kind of how that all came about. I'd be yeah. so interested to hear about that. So yeah, so basically that I was. So I know the the first team, the first team manager at the time, who's now the um, the, the head director of it. So or more or less the, the, of the of the team. So is, is that Dan, Dan Neville? Dan Neville, yeah. yeah. So that he, he he used to work coaching with my dad, um, and he was obviously starting to build a team up and. He then obviously got into contact with Dad, and they were talking about things, and he was saying what he's doing, and he said, "Where's where's your heritage?" And then we've gone, "Well, BBI is our heritage. Yeah. We've got family from there, parents from there." So he's gone, "Well, okay, well then, why not bring call you up and bring you in?" Yeah. So and I'm like, "Hang on a second, what? what, what, what? <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely done." So and then I've got a call up, and I've played the first two friendly games. Can you remember much of of that 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 debut and those first few appearances? Oh, I remember them because I remember. Uh, yeah, they weren't. The, we didn't play the biggest of teams, so <clears throat> we played 
um, Dutch St. Martin, uh, French St. Martin, and then we played St. Bart's. They were my first three games that I went out for and played. Uh, we won, we beat Dutch St. Martin, drew with French St. Martin, and then beat St. Bart's. And honestly, that was the best experience of my life to start off and the start of the win and with the team. I know they were only friendlies and it wasn't like proper qualifiers, but that it was just a great experience. And then obviously then we moved straight into qualifiers afterwards and the atmosphere and the adrenaline rush and playing for your country. It's just another level of like trying to play football. It's just, it's surreal. It's surreal. It's, you could only like have that feeling by playing it. You could never get that anywhere else. Yeah. Obviously like, like, like you say, incredible start with those fixtures and, and for BVI, those are great results. Obviously, fast forward a little bit to last year, or earlier yeah. this year even, and then there's a you know you're up against Curacao, and I know that yeah. you, you obviously had two games before that, um, which were you know we had the opportunity to watch very very close games it's defensively, really good performances. We actually yeah. didn't get to watch the Curacao game, but then all of a sudden, you're sharing the pitch with Premier League footballers. What, what what is that feeling like when you walk out there and you've got the likes of Bakuna and Martina and players like that? Well, I just get excited because like it's just like I'm now showing what I can do yeah. against a professional football player. Yeah, yeah. In the prem, like a million steps higher than I am playing, and people. I think some people, are, for me, shy away from the opportunity, but like it just gets me going because like, I I enjoyed that like. Me as a player, I anyone or whoever plays football in life aspires to be where they are. So when you're playing against them, you just want to show what you can do and say, "Look, I know he's playing there, but honestly, I could do what he does, yeah. or I could be or try and go against him." Obviously, it's never going to happen, but that's the mentality you go with yeah, as a lot of football. As yeah, a football yeah. So, ah, oh, honestly, I, the the game against Curacao and the, the personnel that were there, I mm. was it was just oh, surreal. You go there, we trained because we trained and then they obviously came down to train on the pitch after us. And then we're walking back to get back onto the bus to go back to the to the hotel to then rest up the next day. You see uh, Patrick Cliver walk in, you see the Pakuna brothers walking in, just like that. What? <laughs> so, yeah, it's crazy. It is crazy. It is crazy. Just just on that a little bit, and maybe like take a step back to like World Cup qualification in, in general. So you said about those those first few games and um, Dutch St. Martins, uh, St. Bart's, etc. Um, and then it kind of, that World Cup qualification is, is just the next step up. But I've always got, so the first two results, right? 3-0 against Guatemala, 3-0 against um, SVG, which are kind of on paper actually free results right um yeah. what is and then when you've gone and you've had cuba and then and then curacao which on oh, that game I, I i just want to talk more about that game and those players but the what is the the mindset or like the team talk in the build-up well so you'll know this right the british version i don't think i've ever won a world cup qualification game play. so what is like the mindset going into those games is it a genuine right? So is it a genuine belief of we can turn these over, or is it more at this stage we need to just put in a, a serious performance and, and sort of see how we see how we end up? Yeah. Honestly, as a mindset for myself, um, being like, I'm always going with that attitude that we can get result, and yeah. I promise you, the whole Love boys that. the same. Always thinking we get result because if you don't go with that attitude, I promise you, swear to God or not, you will just not not perform to the best level as possible. You have to go out there with an attitude that, okay, yeah, they might be better or something paper and they've got players playing fresh or all, but we can make a goal here. And for us, it was more that, obviously we're going to be defending quite a bit, but when we get the ball, we've got to use it and exploit quickly and do something with the ball. Um, from that Guatemala game, we did so well to keep them at bay for so long yeah. and, and keep it at that, that score line. But then going into the uh, St. Vincent game, every one of our players were knackered. We were struggling. <laughs> yeah. So it didn't help. Um, I, yeah, I, I'd rather play that way than the other way because I reckon could have get turned over by yeah. Guatemala a lot. But because we wanted a big result against St. Vincent, but it just didn't come because yeah. we had, Time, but yeah, it looked it looked like before it, 
the way that that group shaped up, it was very much like, right, yeah, let's be fair, Guatemala, Cuba, um, Curacao game, you can almost, they're going to be they're going to be difficult games. That yeah. SVG game was very much like they've had some poor results. I think they lost to TCA, didn't they? In, in, yeah. Um, in Nations League stuff, or it might be Nations League qualifiers or whatever it was. So it kind of from the outside looking, it was like, oh, hold on, they they could get a result there. So I think it was two 0 quite quickly in that game, wasn't it? To, to SVG. But we watched. We I think the Guatemala game tomorrow was that game that we watched, wasn't it? And I think you had. Yeah, I mean, it was bodies on the line. Wasn't it? it was. It was, a, uh, it was but, amazing. But, but the. Um, you you boys had a few chances on the break. Mm. You had a yeah. couple of chances. I remember early doors thinking it might have been Tyler or, or Robbie had a, had a chance. Um, I remember, I think I think me and you, Tom, we were laughing quite a bit at that one, weren't we, because of the um, the goal, the keeper for the, the BVI. Incredible um, performance. Jules, what a performance. I've, ne- I've never seen a keeper with longer limbs. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, he was unreal. He was unreal. How would you then, like, so it, it's kind of done now, isn't it? So it's like, what, World Cup qualifiers for yourselves is done. Yeah. How would you kind of sum it up from a, a BVI perspective? Um, well, it's hard. One to, it's a hard one to say. It's a hard one because disappointing, yes, personally, yeah. because obviously I want a result against St Vincent, mm. but I can't ask more. I couldn't ask for any more from the boys. Everyone put in a hundred percent every time they came out. We were playing against big, big players, so we weren't expected to do much really so honestly obviously disappointed with one of the games but at the rest of the games I, I can't really knock the boys and I can't be disappointed because everyone put their up put their all in and didn't give up didn't show they were they weren't up to the standard to, to be there they everyone wanted to be there everyone gave it their all so yeah I, in hindsight I'm I'm, I'm grateful that it, <laughs> I got to go and be a part of the team yeah but obviously we look we look forward to Nations League right now Big time, big time. So, I mean, obviously, we'll, we'll kind of touch on the Nations League a bit because that, from from our point of view, that's the, the absolute pinnacle of, of yeah, CONCACAF yeah. competition. But, you know, really, I, I know what you say about, obviously, disappointment for BVR not winning a game and, and obviously some of the results, particularly SVG. But, you know, you look back to, say, eight, 12 years ago, the BVI squad, completely different to what it is now. A lot of yeah. older players based primarily yeah. on the island. Now yeah. you're coming in with a squad, average age of like 20, 21 or something yeah. like that, the squad. Yeah. Looking four years in the future, do you think that BVI will be looking at games, particularly against teams like St Vincent, and it's, okay, we are going to get a result. Not we really want to, but actually we will. Yeah, and that's the aim. and That's what we're pushing towards. Considering like I'm 24 and being yeah. a senior player, that, that, that's where we're at at the moment. So four years' time... Like I'm going to be 27, 28, pushing on that, and we're going to have our youngsters yeah. who are going to be striving at 20, 22, 23, so hitting their prime. So we're going to be challenging them. So that's why we're trying to get them in, trying to get the coaching staff to get them going, get them where they need to be, at the level they need to be, so we can just keep pushing on. We've got our older players in, got our younger players that have grown up and progressed and now playing proper men's football, and then we're just going to shine and show people what we can do and that we can compete and then we can beat these teams that's the aim and that's what that's where it's driving towards from from the outside looking i think you can really i think you can really see that i think you can really feel that versus like a few years ago it it felt like a little bit of a mismatch of a team in the sense of you had a lot of island-based players and then you had almost like a handful of players of of sort of british-based players that were late 20s early 30s um jordan johnson was one and there was quite a few that from like league town i don't know and the team felt a little bit sort of, sort of not very well structured, essentially, and kind of set up looked a little bit kind of all over the place. But you can see now that there is like a plan and an emphasis on that youth development, yeah. and it feels like there's quite a, a decent project in place there that's sort of being yeah. led by by Dan. Um, what is like the overall ambition? Is it to win games, or is it with kind of an eye on? Well, hold on, World Cups broadening out to forty eight teams here. We could be in, you know. Is, is is something as massive as World Cup qualification something that is spoken about? Oh yeah, hundred percent. That is really? that is the yeah. aim. Qualification Jeez. is the aim, and that's the go to. You have to aim big. You have to yeah, aim yeah. high. That that's that's not always the case. Even when I play club level or anywhere, you always aim high because you always hit park. You always hit midway, or you get there. That's the aim. So our aim is to qualify. Our aim is to be in the World Cup. That's mad. 
massive. What, how, how much kind of, so you've been in and around the team, would you say you're 24, so what is it, like, since you were about 20, 20, 21, 20, 21. 21. how much yeah. has it changed, how much have you seen it change in that, in that time already? Oh, so much. The players yeah. that have come up, the, 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 the staffing that's come in, um, obviously, I don't know if you've heard, the facilities and the ground we're building, um, so it, from where I started to where it is now, it's just going to keep growing. Yeah. Uh, the players are coming up, the youngsters are coming up. Uh, it, it can't be an, it, any better system to keep growing. It, yeah. It's just going to keep showing on. So yeah, What's, it's what's going on with the ground, sorry? The, yeah, the so, AO Shirley, right? they're redoing it. AO Shirley, yeah. So basically, we've, we've, it's been turfed. So yeah. um, they're just now finishing off, putting up a stadium on it, and then oh, we'll have our own finally get to play home games <laughs> yeah I love it yeah. it's really nice that's that's what that's what I'm, I'm I'm really excited about playing proper home games that, that'd, be, that'd be nice especially like like we're sort of coming back to the Nations League I think the draws later this year start next year for the next batch of Nations League games I mean what a competition for the likes of teams like BVI to get involved in and other teams that operate at that level because that's that's the big opportunity to win games you must be looking forward to playing some of those teams, like like the teams you've already mentioned. Yeah, hundred percent, and, and and that's the thing. See, from from a standpoint of where we've been, I've played in that already, and 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 we've we've got and shown that we can compete, but we just never have crossed the line. Turks and Caicos, winning two 0 end up yeah. drawing two two. Uh, go and play Bonaire, Oops, go one 0 up and end up losing four one, and then. Going, they went then play away to Bonaire, going two 0 up, end up losing three two. We we can we can beat these teams. They're very beatable teams, and we can definitely do it. We're just not ticking over yet, yet. And that's what I feel like when we go into this 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 Nations League this year. Uh, we we've got something to prove, and we've got something to show people that hang on a second, we ain't we are ones to compete this year. So yeah, we've got a lot to prove this year. When we sort of had that almost random kind of um, we bumped into each other didn't we kind of after you yeah. finished training and you mentioned about kind of new coaching set up and new managers and stuff how's, how's that all has that all happened has that come to come to fruition have you got new coaches new managers in place I saw something about uh, um, you guys have just finished a UK sort of training yeah. camp all the players got together um, but it didn't sort of outline anything around new managers or anything has that all Happened. What, what's the setup there now? I don't. To be honest, I don't really know much about that. I, okay. uh, it was just more of a camp. We went in, um, and we just had a little, uh, had a couple of sessions, yeah. um, and played a game, which was just a little in-house game, just to get the boys taken over a little bit. <clears throat> yeah. But coaching and stuff, I'm not too sure. Oh, really. I'm, just, I'm just waiting. We're just it's a waiting thing, I think. But mm-hmm. all I know is there's coaching staff that are that have shunned up and got their, their licensing. Um, they've been putting full license in it in the BVI, so they're helping that system bring up. And then obviously some of the boys are starting to come over to England and start trying to play um, football in England or in America. But yeah, yeah, I don't really know much. Oh, about that's it. So just um, just on those those players at the moment, and you look at the players that are available now. Who would you say is is the the best? player for that British Virgin Islands national team the best sort of player yeah. in that squad um, you, can't, you can't you can't say so <laughs> <laughs> no I would not give up um, for me I can't I can never pick out one because okay team, yeah alright all right, at the end of the day it's 11 be 11 sure sure that one. but if we didn't have Jamie if we didn't have yeah. Tosh um and then we didn't have them two for me personally. I couldn't see the team functioning and revolving. Uh, yeah. Them two together in the midfield, just something else, break up play. I, I personally, I'd love them in my squad if I could have them in my in my team anywhere I go. But for me, if you didn't have them two playing, we don't. I we couldn't break up play. We can then pass out with the ball. We can we can get going again. So for me, it's them two. Obviously, Jerry as well. Um, yeah. Obviously, because he's 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 he is a pro now, so yeah, with my actual professional football player playing for our team. Um, but yeah, I mean the whole bunch together, we just gelled so well. And we're a good yeah. team, but like I said, Jamie and Jamie and Tosh for me, the, the the two the two for me. 
I think for for us watching, particularly that that Guatemala game, you know, obviously, like you say, Jerry, it's it's not a given, but because he is a pro, you sort of expect that top performance. I, I think that you know, along, alongside yourself, some standout players. I mean, I've never seen anyone put themselves about like Jamie in the centre of the park. But also, also Javier at the back is an absolute machine. Mate, we was, we were impressed, weren't we? Right, so we didn't know. To, like what sort of levels he could reach and we saw that I think he was centre half alongside Jerry for that game yeah, yeah. Mate, he was quality I, I was surprised but I mean he's been playing through kind of US colleges and stuff but I think I was I was surprised by him actually and, and then some of the other island based players the quality that they've got it's there isn't it yeah it is there and that's, and that's what I keep telling people it is there they're, they're, getting, they're progressing and getting better with Javier it's funny because he's, he's never been a centre back, but uh, <laughs> a winger. But if you see his structure and his build, he he can do that job. So and we keep telling him that, and, and he keeps performing. So it's hard, it's hard to take him out when you keep performing. But um, yeah, no, we've, we've we've got people that are shining. Um, Carlos as well. He's now stepping up. I know he's yeah. getting older, but he's proven his worth as well at the moment. Yeah. I think. Um, and then Robbie's been doing well. So the boys are doing well. So we're getting it. Just the high lines or just, just to like talk about um, you, you a little bit more, right? So you're, yeah. um, and I've told them actually, firstly, right? What, what position do you play? <laughs> or is it just like a? Because I've seen so, you at the moment. What is this? Eleven goals, seven <laughs> games. Um, on the gets a flight over to the British Rail Line, gets thrown in at left back. What? <laughs> Basically, so so personally, I've always been a forward. So um, okay. I've my whole life been playing. Um, in academy, he's been a forward, um, and he got to sixteen when it went properly into like looking at other positions and stuff, and where I could exploit, maybe start shining on. It was end up being left back to left wing back, and then I'm a very strong, heavy left footed, so mm. wing back end up left left back, sort of similar positions, more defensive as a left back, but I still am bombing forward as a winger because that's just me so preferably if I had a choice if someone could tell you Josh where are you going to play tomorrow I'd say striker or left left wing but like I said someone telling me to go play for the BVR and play for your country at left back yeah um, yeah. yeah. I was about to say I dare say when it comes to that you you almost don't care do you you just the, the call up and... I'll be there. yeah exactly 100% I play wherever they tell me to play I'm happy I'm happy as long as I'm in the team as long as I'm playing every week I'm so happy yeah. uh, what just, just kind of looking at, at kind of you and then your aspirations for like the, the season and maybe like look and like looking ahead right so you you want to you want to give this you want to give this a go right you've you know i think we we spoke when you were doing some, some pre-season trials with some, some clubs maybe like three yeah. or four divisions above you know and you'd had some some pretty good yeah. pre-season there and, it, and nothing quite materialized yeah um that's that's where you that's where you want to get to right yeah so like yeah i've been <laughs> It's been a bit of a tough pre-season for me this year anyway I've, I've, I've had i've had opportunities like so i was at salisbury for a yeah. bit and it, i ended up having a thing with gosport which <sighs> kind of messed me about a little bit with that and then um end up being with totten AFC totten for a while yeah. um and now i'm still training with them but budget wise and stuff it's a bit hard for me to jump in so mm-hmm. it's it's i'm um, at a level where I'm trying to progress on and then step up from Andover but I think now is that I need to do what I'm doing now which is going and showing that look I, I'm better than this league I need yeah. to get out of it and that's what I've kind of been doing um, at the moment obviously Jamie didn't score Saturday uh, but <laughs> I've been on, a, been on a bit of a goal run so that's yeah, just, yeah. Which is good so. yeah, but yeah. hopefully hopefully it'll come soon but yeah I'm just waiting for someone to go Come on, Josh. We'll give you a go. That's yeah. what I'm waiting for. Uh, I don't mind training and, and trialing, but it, I just want someone to just give me a go. That's, that's yeah. What I'm right. for. And and in terms of you know, it can be a club player or, or an international player. I imagine based on the fixtures we've spoken about already, it'd be an international player. But who who do you think out of all the all the games you played for the BVI, who has been that player on the opposition's team that it's like? You know they're good, Rolls but Royce. wow, Rolls yeah. Royce. yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, 
It is a tough one. It's a tough one. Um, it's got to be a Curacao. Is it a Curacao? Curacao Black. No, I do you know what I'm going to have really? to say. I'm, I'm going to have to say Hernandez okay, uh, for Cuba. Oh, yeah. Mm. Really? Okay. Only being that <laughs> when we played them, he, oh, for me, he didn't, he didn't do like things that I thought he was going to do. But when he did it, you were like, wow. <laughs> I was just like, wow! I think I think one of the goals he scored. I think he beat like six of our players and think the keeper. I think that's what I, I fucking remember. But it was one of them ones where like you even try and dive in to take the ball off him, and he, he's gone. He's you don't even try. And I remember when he came on. He came to my side one time, and I went, "I'm not even gonna try to take the ball off. Him. I'm just gonna stand you there. If you're gonna go that way, I'll follow you. But I'm not gonna try and take the ball off you because you're gonna be gone." And I think that, that that's sometimes what you've got to recognise yeah, that, you yeah. know, he's just going to beat you. But that, for me, it was him because every time you dive in or you try to take the ball off him, he left you in, a, in dust. Um, obviously, I can't knock any of the, the curious players because they're all amazing. But for me, looking at a player that I'd aspire to be and the way I like to play football, that, that it had to be him. Yeah, that's so cool. Just, just like on that, how have you found... So you, you've been involved with... I was with Swag Barrett. been involved with South for, for over three years now. What has been and I'm sure it probably changes based on the, the level of team play but what did you find as like the biggest sort of challenge to be involved in an international setup so you you train once or twice a week with whoever play on a Saturday around over town but then when you're mm. in that environment of right I'm getting on a plane right I'm, I've got international duty yeah what was the biggest challenge or like hurdle that you face kind of getting into that space and that mindset that's a hard one though because usually with, with with it all like once you get into that when you're in that environment you're, you're, you just switch on any sort of player yeah, sure. once, 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 that, once, once you get a call up or or you go on the plane like you, you just switch on because it's like you're playing for your country now that everything else is gone this is what you got to focus on and turning it on for me isn't a hard. I don't find it hard. I, I, I can't. I can't. I can't fear, find a way or say a way that I, I found struggle of trying to get it on. Maybe maybe flying and then landing and training the next day is like oh okay, yeah. it's physically going on your body, but mentally switching it on, it's it's, it's just there for me. I just I don't have a problem. So yeah, I didn't find found it hard. I've only only found it physically draining on the body then to go play in the, in, in the midst of the heat yeah um, I, that, that, that that might have been it the Bonaire one when we played Bonaire in um, in Curacao and it was like nearly 40 degrees and we played at 2 o'clock <laughs> that, that that may be that may be the one where I'm like okay maybe I don't want to play today <laughs> yeah give me back to the yeah yeah give me back imagine England it's raining it's like <laughs> minus 2 but yeah the, other than that nah yeah I, I, I Well, Josh, mate, we don't want to keep you too long this evening. We <laughs> massively appreciate you coming to talk to us. It's been really interesting um, to hear yeah, some of the things it. you've said. It's been absolutely great to talk to you. Thanks for your time. Uh, and I suppose all we can really say, unless you've got any more questions, Ryan, is obviously all the best uh, and over and Thank beyond you. for the rest of the season. Make sure you keep that Thank goal you. run going. And and good luck for the, the yeah. Nations League. I hope you get a good draw because we want to see some competitive games in that Nations League. Mate, no, sure. thank you. Thank you guys sure. and thank you for what you're doing because it's, it's, it's amazing and obviously Thanks, obviously keep in contact all the time but yeah, no problem. Yeah, Anytime. Josh, mate, yeah, really appreciate it. We'll be, I'm, I'm, Tomo, we'll have to get up to watch Absolutely. Um, Andover. I'm kind of eyeing up that Vars game next week actually. I know oh, you, it's going to be packed. I, I, I know it a few of the, 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 uh, the, 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 the New Street um, guys, Josh, the likes of... Um, uh, Scotty and Shane Locke and Lewis Alderman and stuff. I don't know if you know or, or have ever had anything to do with those guys, but um, I know those boys. So it might be quite quite an interesting one for, for us to go down, watch yourself, and then um, and see that because that'll be a spiky game. That'll be a good one in the Vars. Um, but no, mate. Uh, yeah, I'll just repeat what um, Tom said. Appreciate you putting some time aside. It's, it's great to chat. It's so so cool for us. I know for you, you're probably like, God, these two are funny. <laughs> no, John. Uh, I think it's amazing. They're they're funny they're funny amazing. pair, mate. But um, we we absolutely love it. So it's been so so good just to chat, just to 
to, to talk BVI and talk international football with you, mate. So um, appreciate it. All the best for the um, the season. We'll, we'll probably see you soon. 100%. Thank you, guys. Appreciate cool. it. Awesome, mate. Cool. Cheers, Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. Cheers, all. Speak Bye. soon. Bye.